Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of dyadic tensors. If we're given the standard basis, of R3. The standard basis, of course, is just I hat, so I hat, J hat, K hat, so I hat, J hat, K hat. Then we can expand any vector V can be decomposed or expressed in terms of these vectors over here. Has the form V is lambda 1 i hat plus lambda 2 j hat plus lambda 3 k hat, right? And of course, these, we can find what these things are in terms of the dot product, right? So in other words, this lambda 1, lambda 1 is going to be v dot i hat, lambda 2 is going to be v dot j hat, and lambda 3 is going to be v dot k hat, right? Because there is an orthogonal basis. Now, we're used to doing two elementary operations, two product operations of the vectors. So we have, if I give you two vectors, so given two vectors, two vectors in R3, then we have what? Then this implies that V dot W is V1 W1 plus V2 W2 plus V3 W3, just the dot product, right? So we have a dot product. Okay, and this is also known in linear algebra as an inner product. We're doing something called a trace on these things. And then we also have an operation for three-dimensional vectors called cross product, right? We also have a vector V cross W, V cross W, so I can cross two vectors. And this is going to be a vector itself, right? This is going to be the determinant of I, J, and K V1, V2, V3, W1, W2, W3. It's given by this determinant. And so, of course, we can figure out what this thing is going to be. It's going to be a V2, W3 minus W2, V3, I hat. And the J hat's going to be a V3, W1, V3, W1 minus W3, V1, J hat. And then finally, it's going to be a V1, W2, V1, W2 minus W1, V2, K hat, that's the cross product, okay? So in other words, I can dot two vectors and get a scalar. I can cross two vectors and get another vector, right? But typically in a multivariable calculus class, one thing we say that we can't do, and there's always a warning that's at this juncture of a Calc 3 class, in the typical, let's write it like this, the typical Calc 3 warning, one that I never issue to my class, is that you can't multiply vectors, right? And strictly speaking, that's not true. We can actually construct different objects. Now that we're comfortable with some ideas from tensor analysis, we can construct new objects called dyadic tensors, right? So instead, so we will new objects. And these new objects are called dyadic tensors, okay? And so as it stands, we can sort of make an educated guess of what we could do. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider these so-called unit dyads. Okay? And there are going to be nine of these unit dyads, and they're exactly what you imagine they would be, right? So in other words, these things are constructed so that you can actually formally multiply our outer product vectors together, right? And so what are these unit dyads? They're i hat, i hat, then i hat, j hat, then i hat, k hat, then j hat i hat, then j hat j hat, then j hat k hat, then k hat i hat, then k hat j hat, then k hat k hat. And these are the unit dyadic tensors. In other words, if I was to sort of formally multiply a vector with i, j's, and k's and sort of formally concatenate them, I get all of the terms of this expression. So it's important to note now that note from this, Note is that i hat j hat is not the same unit dyad as j hat i hat. So in other words, this product structure, the product of these unit vectors is not commutative, right? So this product is not commutative.
which isn't a big deal because we know that cross products aren't commutative either. Although cross products do share a nice property that V cross W is the same thing as negative W cross V. So there is some sort of anti-symmetry, anti-commutativity in the cross product, but there's no such commutativity for just standard unit dyads, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll define, so now we can define, a dyadic tensor tau, I'm going to put two bars over tau, is an expression of the form. It's going to be a linear combination of these nine vectors over here, right? So instead of writing nine things out, I'm going to build some notation, which is sort of is, is commensurate with our ordinary tensor notation, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set now, so this is a key, we're going to set i hat to be equal to delta one hat, j hat to be equal to delta two hat, and k hat to be equal to delta three hat, okay? So what is a dyadic tensor? A dyadic tensor is simply an expression like this. So tau bar bar is going to be the sum over i, the sum over j, and we're going to avoid the covariant and contravariant notation for a little while until we're sort of comfortable with both of these things, right? I want to at least define this formally, and then later I'll show how these diagonal tensors can be either constructed in a way where they're either a two-covariant tensor, a two-contravariant tensor, or maybe even a mixed tensor, right? So there's a variety of different contexts we want to consider these diagonal tensors in, okay? Formally speaking, it's just the sum over i and j of some coefficients tau i j. Those are just real numbers over here. So these are just coefficients. Those are just real numbers. And then times, formally, times these expressions over here, delta i and then delta j. And these things over here are just unit dyads. So these delta i, delta j's, I'm summing over all the unit dyads. Those are all unit dyads. Okay? Excellent. All right, and so now this allows me to, in some, this, this sort of definition of a dyadic tensor allows me to define what outer multiplication is. And so now let's do this definition. So definition. If I give you a vector v, and now I'm going to build up some tensor notation, I'm going to call those vi and then delta i hat, where I've used the notation, the Einstein summation convention. So now I'm really thinking of these delta i's as what? I'm thinking of these delta i's as covariant, a covariant basis for R3, and these vi's as the contravariant components. And then I give you a vector wi, w, which is w, j, and then vj, delta j. Then define their outer product. Not their inner product, or not their dot product, but their outer product or tensor product. By V W is going to be V I, then W J, then delta I, delta J. Okay. And so if we had more space, what could we write this out as? So let's, just, let's actually just do it just to sort of get the flavor of what these things look like, right? So this is going to be a what? It's going to be a V1, W1, I, I. And now I'm just putting all the indices lower, so you have to bear with me while I'm sort of changing from covariant to contravariant notation, just to get the sense of what these things look like. And then a V what? A V1, and then a W2, then an I, then a J then a V1, then a W3, then an I, K, then a V2, and then a W1, then a J, I, then a V2, W2, a J, and a J, a V2, W3, a J, and a K, then a V3, W1, then a K, then an I, then a V2, W3, W2, rather, V3, W2, then a uh, what? Then a K, then a J, then finally a V3, W3, then a what? Then a K, K, right? So you can see how this gets cumbersome automatically, which is why this Einstein notation and understanding the covariant, contravariant structure of these, of these objects is going to be important for us in, the, in further videos. But if you were just to formally construct a two covariant tensor, which corresponded to multiplying or doing the outer product of two vectors, this would be the algebraic structure which would be induced. Now, with this in tow, we need to sort of look at these expressions over here and figure out how I would add expressions like this together, how I'd 
scale them by a scalar, how I would do a single dot product, how I would do a single cross product. So now I open up the toolbox to more operations than just a single inner product or a single cross product or a single tensor product. And now we'll sort of build the algebra around these dyadic tensors. And now we can sort of see as well that there's nothing stopping us at stopping at dyadic tensors. We could potentially go up to triadic tensors, tetradic tensors, quintic tensors, higher order things. And eventually we'll just say we can generalize this to tensors of order n. And that will allow me to do differential operations on things like vector fields and construct vector identities and prove all sorts of really useful things when we're dealing with vector quantities. Thank you very much.